look at today is going to be about priorities. Because Jesus knew, as did the early apostles, that it is really easy to start focusing in on things that do not matter. Now, two weeks ago, not this last week, but the week before that, I was out at our camp, Bellevue Lodge, and uh, with all the great four, fives, and sixes, and as I often do, I said, well, do you know what, I'll, uh, after each meal, I will go into the kitchen and I'll, uh, I'll help the kids do dishes. It's always been the tradition that this cabin, then the next cabin, then the cabin after, they, they're responsible for dishes that day for that meal. And I usually go in. It's a good way to spend some time with the kids and kind of get to, they get to see me at a little bit of a different level. And so I go in and do dishes with them. Well, when I got there, I was told, yes, we'd love you to go in and do dishes, but things have changed. The kids aren't doing the dishes anymore. It's just some of the workers. Okay, why? Well, health regulations won't let the kids into the kitchen. You know, they, they might put something away dirty or something. Okay. Well, after that, at least there's the odd meal they get a break from because, I mean, there's, there's one meal during the week where, you know, we, we, we take lunch down to the fire pit and everybody gets to cook hot dogs and things like that. It's a lot less dishes. So that's a, that's, that's a good meal, right? Ah. Well, you know, you, you can't have the kids cook the hot dogs because even though they're pre-cooked and all that, you You'd hate to have some kid eat something that wasn't, you know, cooked quite right. And so we actually cook them up at the kitchen and then carry them down to campfire. Now, the two things that I mentioned, do you think those are the biggest worries we have in our world right now? Do you think that's the priorities we should be worried about? Whether the kids kind of put the dishes away quite sparkling clean or whether they get... I don't know that those are our biggest priorities. It's easy to, however, get bent out of shape about things that are maybe not our highest priority. As Jesus certainly comes along and he's speaking to the Pharisees often about the fact that they're worried about things that in the long run really don't matter and they've forgotten what they should be prioritizing. And I hate to say it, but often in history, the church has been little better than the Pharisees at prioritizing what really matters. But you know, when we follow the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is part of our lives, we can live according to some priorities. And we're going to really quickly deal with four priorities that come out of the passage that we came across at the end of We've said all along through the Gospel of Mark that Jesus did not come to fix the world, but to prepare a church to go out and change the world. What does that church need to look like? He said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the Gospel to, all, to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, whoever does not believe will be condemned. Jesus appears to his disciples um, this is kind of a, takes a whole lot of stories, combines them together. Um, he probably said these words a couple of times to them before he finally went into hell. This is your big job. Go tell the entire world about me. Go out and preach. Not just go out and talk about things that are a priority. Go out and actually preach the gospel that the Son of God came to earth to die, to rise again, that our sinful nature might die. And that the life of God may invade our very souls. Your job is to tell the world. Your job is to preach it. Your job is not to bring life. Yeah, I dealt with this a little bit last week. The church is not responsible for the people's response. The church's responsibility is just to do what it was called to do. Some will believe. Some will not. But give everybody a chance to choose themselves.
You just do your job. Some will reject this message of hope. They don't want it. They reject the whole idea that they could be sinful. They have no love for God. They just choose not to believe. But many will. Give them the chance for life. Baptism is mentioned in this. Baptism is a symbol of that acceptance. Um, Matthew even records it that the church is to go out and to baptize the whole world. Baptism is not salvation, but it is a symbol of our acceptance of salvation. Of course, so it was about six weeks ago. We, we did uh, a number of baptisms here. I love those Sundays. They're lots of fun. Where people come up and say, yes, I believed in Jesus Christ and I want to continue to follow him in salvation. It's a wonderful moment. And it's part of what Jesus tells us is our natural process of salvation. Do you know what? The church, however, often can go off in the wrong way when we talk about everything other than Jesus. And we do not do our job of bringing the gospel to the world. In the Gospel of Matthew's uh, version of this, he says, I want you to go out. I want you to go and preach the gospel in Jerusalem and Samaria and to all the world. If he was speaking to us today, it would almost be like he was saying, I want you to go to Canada. I want you to go to North America. I want you to go out to all the corners of the world and make sure everywhere knows of Jesus. Bottom line is, the church is going its right way when we bring the gospel where it needs to go. We tell people of Jesus. Now we're to be a church empowered. Now we're going to hit a little controversy in this one. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up serpents, serpents with their hands, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. Wow. Does sound like a fun little verse? Uh, there's a little bit of controversial here. There have been the, those who looked at that and said, oh, does this mean maybe as part of our worship we should be picking up poisonous snakes? And uh, there are parts of, there are churches you can actually go to in the, in the southern United States where people have died in church because they've started picking up snakes on the bait. It's not telling us to go do it. It's based on something that happens in Paul's life where the Apostle Paul is picking firewood that he's been shipwrecked on an island. They're going to get firewood. He, he grabs some firewood. A snake bites him as he's doing that. He pulls up his hand. Everybody can see the snake. He shakes it off. And But he, he, there's not a lot of entertainment in ancient days, so they all decide to sit around and watch and see how long it takes him to die. And he doesn't. It's kind of the basis of this verse. He's not saying, go out and do this, but God can protect us. And God can do supernatural things, and we are to live within the power of the things of God. Go out and live the full life of God that demonstrates power. And often the church has gone off and shown anything but power to the world. There's a story of a teacher who had taken their class on a swimming trip. And at the end of a trip, a real, really angry parent showed up at the school, just ripping on the teacher because the child had come home without a towel. The towel was left somewhere, or something happened, and she ripped on it, saying, This class of hooligans stole the towel. What are you teaching them? Aren't you teaching them not to steal other people's towels and other things? Teaching kids that stealing is wrong is something you should be doing. And the teacher, well, I don't know what was stolen. It may just be misplaced. I'll tell you what, I'll check the loss of found. What did it look like? Well, it was a white towel and had the words Holiday Inn plant on the bottom. Sometimes does our message and our actions match? You know what? We can say that there's a lot of problems in our world today, and a lot of the fault for that lies with the church that knows the truth about God and fails.
fails to continually ask the Holy Spirit to live in our lives and empower us to make a difference. Everything on our screen, we may not daily live these things out, but we do need to live showing that our God is the God of power. Our God is the God of power. And part of how that lives out is we are a church that brings healing to our world. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. It goes with that earlier part. The church is a place of healing that brings wholeness in all areas of our lives. The call of God is on us to live well. That we live fully. When we were created to be made whole and healthy spiritually, emotionally, and physically. And the cross is the purchase of hope that that will be our destiny. That we will live without death, sickness, or without any of our part being unwell. And it's guaranteed on the cross that one day we will know this in full. That is coming. That is coming. In the meantime, whenever God works in our life to bring wholeness in any sort of way, whether it be spiritual, emotional, or whether even God does a miracle and heals us physically, anytime something like that happens, it is a reminder of the promise that we have. It is a reminder of what is to come, and it is a statement that this is your eternal destiny. This is where you're headed, to be whole emotionally, physically, spiritually. And if at any point in time we are not completely well in some area of our life, it is a reminder that we grasp and wait for the day and hope for the day when that will be true. We do hope for that day. We should long to be here. You know, in our world today, I think God wants to do more miracles. In fact, some parts of the world see them. And we should be praying with believing hearts, hearts that God brings more healings, brings more life. Because God's not done with this church. So then the Lord Jesus, after he'd spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God, and they went out and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by accompanying signs. Church is never left alone. Not a funny thing to say when this is Jesus leaves. Jesus leaves, and then it kind of goes on to say, yeah, but he's going to continue to work in you. He's gone, but he's not. He may not be standing alongside us anymore. That's not the point, because he is sending us out to accomplish, but looking over us with incredible interest. It would have been quicker and easier for Jesus just to travel the world and do miracles and do all his signs and everything. That's not the point. He wanted us. And he loves us so much. He wants us to play a role in his work. Jesus prepared a church to revolutionize the world. And the church did go out and change the ancient world. Sometimes the church is done pretty poorly at it. Other times the church is done okay. But what the church can accomplish when it stays on its main task of understanding that we're to, we're to preach the gospel, we're to live lives of power among the world, we're to bring healing, all in the power of a God who never leaves us. When we stay on task, we can accomplish great things. 
when we do it recognizing the absolute need for the power of Jesus first and foremost, that I do not do it on my own or in my own strength, but rather in the power of my Savior, Jesus Christ, things can be done. We don't prioritize the things that are unimportant. Instead, we prioritize Jesus Christ. And He is our focus. He is our love. He is everything. And as long as we stay on that path, prioritizing the hope of Jesus, we can do great things. I think it's appropriate. Finish this whole study of the Gospel of Mark coming to a communion table. Recognizing that it is all about Jesus. And that as part of our last sermon in the Gospel of Mark, that we take the bread, that we take the cup, these emblems of Jesus, we internalize them. We say they are part of us now. We recognize that Jesus is everything. And that as he finished his time on earth, as he left, it was with this idea again that the church, when it is the church, when we are believers who Focus on Jesus. Great things can happen. And the church can once again go out and revolutionize the world. So I'm going to invite our elders to come forward and be prepared to receive. <clears throat>